This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Marianne Benninger, who is uh, the president of a wonderful university. It is Drew University. Good to see you, Doctor. Nice to see you too, Steve. For those who do not know Drew, and I've been up and on the campus, it's a beautiful place. Describe it. It's called the University in the Forest, and we call it the forest, students call it the forest because it's in a natural hardwood forest, but right there in Madison, New Jersey. So right near the train to New York, but this bucolic forest. Yeah, one of our very close friends, the former governor of the great state of uh, New Jersey, also a member of the board of public broadcasting in the state, uh, Tom Kane, former president. Yep, Tom was great president of Drew for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's a very distinguished history, you, but in this particular case, you're here to talk about a partnership with some of the community on mm -hmm. uh, county mm -hmm. colleges, Bergen. Bergen and Raritan and County College of Morris and Brookdale. To do what? To provide a seamless transition for honor students, community college honor students will do two years at these four great places, and then they'll transfer to Drew. And instead of having to do a course by course transfer, they can really plan their whole four years. They can get that solid community college foundation and then when they know what they want to major in, they can finish up their time at Drew. And of course it, it helps them on the expense side. Um, from the community college's mm -hmm. perspective, their students graduate with that associate degree. Talk about that transition. How challenging could it be? Well, a lot of times, as you probably know, students don't, they don't finish community college in part because that may not have been their goal. They might have wanted some courses, they might want to prepare for a job. So what can happen is they can take course after course and then leave without an associate degree. In fact, that's something I did myself. Well, back so, up, you, what, what, you did what? I took courses in community college. I started in a regular liberal arts college like Drew and I dropped out after the first semester. Very long story, very long time Where'd ago. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Philadelphia. So this is down in that area? Yeah, near, it was in Montgomery County where you, I went. Did you wind up in a community college? Mm -hmm. I went to Montgomery County Community College in Pennsylvania. I took a lot of courses. It was where I learned what I wanted to be, that I wanted to be a psychologist. But I never finished there. It was a phenomenal aspect of my education and years later I was even the commencement speaker. But I never finished. And so often students, life gets in the way, you, you know, you have a family or you change jobs and you don't finish community college. And students can leave without that associate degree. In this case, we're talking about really, really bright honor students who we want to get mm -hmm. that associate degree. But then Drew is there for the second two years. They know that they're going to get a four-year degree, and they graduate with that solid liberal arts degree. You connect with these kids, don't you? Oh, very much so do I connect with them. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't get to spend too much time in the recruiting end. But when students come to Drew, yeah. I get to know them. By the way, for those who don't really understand the role uh, of a college president, we've had different <laughs> college presidents. And uh, Kay Walter, our friend up at uh, Bergen, has been here mm -hmm. to talk about this, as well as a presence of independence and public four-year institutions as well. Describe your job. It's a CEO job. I run a corporation. It's a not-for-profit corporation, but it has all the financial parts. The yeah, join the club. Same here. Exactly. What, people think not-for-profit. <laughs> oh, you run a charity. That's right. No, you still have to. It's even more important to make ends meet because you're stewarding other people's money, and you're, you need to steward it well. But it's, it's running a corporation. and. Uh, you know, you have this incredible group of people called the faculty, and the, my job is to make sure that they can do what they do best and that they can connect with students. So I have to provide everything else right. and get out of their way. College affordability. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I, I said, one of the things I happen to know because I told you this before we got on the air is that our son uh, looked at Drew and, and wanted, and I very much was looking at Drew and said, why don't you go there? And he wound up going to a, another fine institution, Fordham, in, mm -hmm. in New York. But I was struck by, in all candor, um, Drew's not cheap. No, Drew is not cheap. Um, why? 
Well, for one thing, it's very rich, human resource rich institution. Faculty do not individually make a lot of money. They have PhDs, but they really don't make a lot of money. But it's very labor intensive. We have one faculty member for every 10 students at Drew. And that's the kind of that's education of we provide. And that's atypical for a lot of institutions of higher learning. That's right. Liberal arts colleges like Drew are founded on that notion that students and faculty are very connected. And at Drew, that's really really are claim to fame, which is why it's also going to be good for the students transferring from the community and county right. colleges. But that one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship, the kinds of uh, internships that students do, research, um, undergraduate research. We just had one of our research faculty members win the Nobel Prize in medicine, and students got right? to work with him. The students worked, Dr. William? William Campbell. And the students worked with Campbell? The students worked with Campbell. He actually did the Nobel work at Merck. We're actually looking at a picture right now. In, uh, in 1990, he came to Drew, and countless students worked in his lab. Having a laboratory like that is expensive. But, you know, 96% of our students get jobs or in graduate school when they leave. So the return on investment is The really ROI high. is big. It is. Well, um, one of our colleagues, Rob Franick, who is... Uh, the editor of Princeton Review and an alum of Drew, he says, return on education, ROE. Return on education. Yeah, real quick, before I let you out here, you've said it's very tough times for higher ed, right? Well, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of focus on affordability and the model, the way that we do it, this high tuition, and then we provide scholarships, merit and need-based scholarships called discount. A student at Drew, for example, pays on average about half of that sticker price of tuition, which is half of $46,000 on the tuition side. That's hard for people to understand. Sure. Why would we have one sticker price and then charge a completely different thing? But it's, um, it allows us to you know, kind of construct a price that a student can afford at his or her economic level and a price where we mm. can reward students for academic achievement. Before I let you out of here, um, you've been in many leadership positions and you're in a tough one now. Mm -hmm. um, as a student of leadership, I'm curious. The number one leadership lesson you've learned so far is? Authenticity. You were ready with that right away. No, Why? No, because, well, it's my stock and trade. Right. I mean, you really have to know what your goals are. You have to know what's best for the place that you're leading. And then you have to bring your best self to it. You have to um, really, you know, you have to be present and be honest to people, and then they're gonna they're gonna believe you because you're worthy of that, and they're gonna follow you. And sometimes you have to give hard messages. Sometimes you get to tell people, "Yeah, great, let's go with it." It it just depends on the situation and what you can bring to it Authenticity. yourself. Authenticity. Authenticity. Listen, uh, we appreciate you joining us, um, uh, Dr. Marianne Benninger. Thanks who is so the president of Drew University, uh, a terrific place, and we wish you nothing but the best, and thank you for joining us. Don't thank let you, be the Steve. last time. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, TD Bank, the New Jersey Education Association, PSE&G, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.